Would you please pray? Thank you, O oh Lord, for each and every person that's gathered here, for each and every gift, spirit-inspired and spirit-given, that is represented here. Help us, Lord, to use our gifts to meet the needs around us and strengthen and edify the body of Christ. Amen. 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 There's a song that my community choir, Mosaic Harmony, sang a few years ago. We recorded it. And it's not a song I wrote, but, um, but it's a song, and it, and it goes like this. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me, we're all a part of God's body. It is God's will that every need be supplied. You are important to me, I need you to survive. That's how the song and it goes on like that. And I pray for you, you pray for me, um, uh, and it goes on like that. But uh, the message of the song is very um, connected and very dependent, and as actually it's derived from the First Corinthians passage, First Corinthians twelve passage that we're sharing today. Uh, that we are indeed um, all a part of the body of Christ. That we all are all interconnected and interdependent. And that's a very difficult pill for, for many of us to swallow and many of us to want to even come to grips with and deal with. I would even go so far as to say that many of us um, ignore that reality and live day to day and, because we've got too many of our own problems and issues to deal with, that the, the thought uh, of engaging some kind of a dynamic where every person that I meet, not only just within my church congregation, but everywhere I go, everyone I meet, where, wherever that, that there's this interconnectedness and interdependence, I know we I don't want to deal with that. And, and we, whether we like it or not, we kind of are stuck with. And each of us has been given uh, gifts and abilities, talents, knowledge, and experience. And if we have been given what we've been given, and we only use it and only apply it to self-serving issues and needs, we only meet our own concerns, and we live insular lives, if that is the way we choose to live, we actually, in effect, are shooting our own selves in the foot. We're actually hurting ourselves. We, the reality is that Jesus teaches, and this First Corinthians passage teaches, that we do actually, physically, and spiritually need one another. We need to, to embrace and acknowledge our interdependence. But why? Why, David? Why should we do that? Why and how can we do that? Well, I'm, I'm glad the Apostle Paul gives us this wonderful uh, illustration of the of the biological body. You know, he said, "Why would the head say, feet? I don't need you, <laughs> right?" And it, it's almost kind of comical the way the Apostle Paul uh, illustrates this. Um, well, why would the hand say to the eye, "I don't need you," or, or you know? The very, uh, all the various parts. I know that if, if I stub my toe, I feel like I hurt all over. <laughs> right? I mean, you go, oh, oh, wait a minute. You know, if I had the ability to just localize my pain. But, I mean, but in fact, when one part of us hurts, the rest of us hurt. And, and here we have 
presented to us an opportunity, my sisters, a real awesome opportunity to look around ourselves as opposed to just looking within ourselves, to look around ourselves and notice and authentically care about needs around us. Is the person beside me going through something? Is there a need that is happening, a, a problem, an issue, a pain, a sickness, a, a, a deficiency, something that is going on around me? You know, but then what, what do we default to? We default to well, I've only got limited resources. I only have limited... What, what can I do? You know, what, there's nothing that I personally can do. And so we end up defaulting, my sisters and brothers, to... It's not my problem. Kind of what we talked about last week. Remember in last week's message when Jesus and his mom and the disciples were at the wedding at Cana? And after everybody had part partied and chowed down and ate up all the food and drank up all the wine, <clears throat> even Jesus said, it's not my problem. Why should I do anything about it? It's not my issue. I, we, we need to continue in exploring that dilemma because I'm guilty of it. And I would venture to guess that each one of us is guilty of it. <coughs> <clears throat> defaulting to, I can only do what I can do. And even I might even, I might not even choose to do what I can do. Because I need what I got for me. Right? Jesus is calling us to a different way of thinking, to operate on a, out of a different paradigm of existence. Jesus really is. He's asking us to live I don't want to go so far as to say globally. But come on, remember several years ago the, the word of global village? You know, that language got really utilized a lot. Um, but in, in our communities, in this church, we're not going to grow and we're not going to get anywhere unless we start thinking more like Jesus thinks. It's not just me. It's not just me. It's we. It's we. It's we. It's 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 we. Yes, I I'm daily. I know I gotta work and I gotta come up with my money to pay my bills and to pay off my credit cards. But if I choose to be insular, come on. If I keep choosing that and don't recognize that right beside me, right around the corner. That, that's what mobilization of resources is about. What little I might be able to do and what little you may be able to do and what little you may be able to do when we put that together, all of our little pieces end up helping and blessing and edifying and strengthening somebody in their time of need. But if we're all in our own little separate worlds, there is no intentionality of mobilization. It never happens. It never even gets to begin. How do we... The Apostle Paul is, is just saying to us, you've got to stop thinking of yourself as just an eyeball. <laughs> right? You, you're not just a finger. You're not just a toenail. You're not, you're not, just, you're not, you're not just you. You are connected. You are a body. Something bigger than just you. And, and with that connectedness, power, God's power, God's spirit, God's blessings can really edify. God gets glorified and people get blessed. What an indictment, these passages today. It really, this is probably one of the most difficult passages difficult sermons that I've needed to share because it, it is, it's an indictment on every one of us that we're not we're not embracing our familyness, our one-bodiedness. So, 
all, all I can do is, all I, I want to do today, I'm, I'm coming to a close, is to offer each of us this, this personal challenge. To think outside of you. To think beyond you. For me, David, think beyond just me. And that what's going on with Renee, what's going on with Carlia, what's going on with Sue, what's going on with Thomasina, what's going on, that, that directly is impacting me. Now see, that, that's the place where we break it off. No, what's going on with that? You got nothing to do with me? Right? No, no, it doesn't. That's our problem. But Jesus is saying just the other. The opposite. Jesus is proclaiming just the opposite. That if you're going through it, there is a kind of a logic. Because you know what goes around comes around anyway. Right? So, <laughs> and if it's happening to somebody else, there's probably a time in our lives when it could happen to us. And if I had been in dialogue and in experiencing and engaging that, would I not now be empowered when it comes around and say, and it's me in my face? If I had taken the initiative of reaching out and walking with her when she was going through her mess, huh? When mess comes into my world, huh? I didn't say if mess comes, I said when! <laughs> when mess comes into my world, I not only will be able to be, I will not only be able to be empathetic, but I may have someone that will say like, oh, remember when I went through that? You were there for me? Come on, let's do this. We can do it. I made it through. You can too. But it only begins when we start to reach out beyond ourselves. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell someone on y'all, and I hope y'all don't mind, you guys. You... Connie and Sandy shared something like totally really cool to me. And at first I thought it was, I, my brain went to this little skeptical place, but I thought, but later on I started to really think about it, I thought it was like really, really cool. Um, they, they got hooked up with this really cool program that talks about tapping. I'm, I'm going to tell her. <laughs> and I'm going like, yeah, right. <laughs> I did, I did. I was born. And but when they started sharing with me that all the various ways that that thing works for them and helps them deal and cope and process, I started seeing like, wow, that is totally powerful. That's, I mean, and if, if they've got something that they've learned or you've got something that you've learned or we've got something that we've experienced and we keep it to ourselves... And we don't share it such that somebody else can use it and tap into it and grab it and run with it. We're all sitting here in our own pity, private pity parties. And we don't, it doesn't need to be that way. It doesn't. So, my sisters and brothers, the challenge, the challenge for us is to think beyond just ourselves. And Acknowledge that we do have knowledge and wisdom and experience and learning and things that we have that can be shared, that can be a blessing. Gifts, abilities, knowledge, all of these things that you have, don't just keep them to yourself. Share it. Use it. Let God be glorified and let God's people be edified and blessed. Would you pray with me? Thank you, Lord, for the challenges that your word provides us. Long ago, Jesus proclaimed, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And with that spirit, Lord, we reach out to fight injustice, to meet needs, to set the oppressed free. Help us, Lord, to realize the power and the gifts within us. And then give us a heart and a mind 
that is generous and that would share those gifts with those around us. For indeed, O oh Lord, we need one another. We can't get along without you, and we can't get along without one another. Help us, O oh Lord, and thank you for this lesson and this challenge. Amen.